Hey everyone, Callie here again, and today I'm bringing you Game 3 from the recent GLC Championship Tournament at Gubu Hobby in Snellville, Georgia. If you do happen to be in the area, you can come join us every weekend for GLC. We play Saturdays at 2 p.m., but we are going to get ready to jump into this game. We have a wonderful one for you with Dark versus Water. Let's just jump right into it. All right, jumping into game three. This is game three of our Gym Leader Championship for the September tournament played at Gubu Hobby. We've got Dark versus Water. Starting off with Yivatel in the active for our Dark player who's going first. Grab a Purloin out of the prizes with that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Our Water player looks like they're starting off with Lapras and then their Whalmer on the bench as well. Two good Pokemon. Whale Lord, obviously an extremely powerful Pokemon for water, very tanking Pokemon, takes 30 less damage from attacks, has 200 HP. Our Dark player just taking a look at the prizes there and then setting them right back down. Purloin is a good card to get out of the prizes early. You want that evolution down so you can start using trade. Looks like Azuru goes down and then passes for turn. Do you see some decent cards in hand for our water player? Go ahead and place a bucket. We'll get two water energy with that, but we also saw that Bax Caliber uh, counter energy. Counter energy not obviously great at the moment. They're not behind on prizes since the game just started. Let's see if our water player has any other cards that they can play this turn. They're definitely going to want to start setting up their ability to accelerate energies, so they need to find either their Frigibax or their Snom which will get, allow them to get into the Frostmoth or the Bax Calibre eventually. Attaching a Water Energy for turn on the Lapras. Then down comes a Quick Ball. Probably going to discard one of those Water Energies. Maybe the Counter Energy, though that's always a tough choice to make. Counter Energy does go down. Probably going to see the Frigibax, since we do know that Bax Calibre is in hand. Otherwise, I will guess we will see either the Snom or possibly even Sobble. Shady Dealings is a very good ability on both the Drizzile and the Inteleon. Getting that down early so that you can start finding trainers once you're evolving is very good. So here comes the Snom. I do wonder if that means that the Rare Candy is prized. They, maybe they're worried about being able to go into Bax Caliber. That, or they just want to be able to have the easier Stage 1 to be able to go into. Dark does typically go fast, so they might be worried about their Bax Caliber just getting KO'd here, or potentially even just the Snom with a quick boss KO if uh, our Dark player is able to power up. Go ahead and attack with that Hydro Pump ability that does 10 damage plus 30 more for each Water Energy attached. So that's 40 damage on our Yvital. Down comes Arvin from our Dark player. Gonna find an item and a tool card. Lots they need to do here, so it'll be interesting to see what they grab. They're playing Buddy Buddy Poffin. We might see that come out so they can get more Pokemon down. I believe I saw Turbo Energize, so they might want to find maybe a Quick Ball to get an attacker, uh, or the Buddy Buddy Poffin, like I was mentioning, to get an attacker down, and then Turbo Energize from the Yvital to get some energy. It does look like they're debating that evolution in sense. Do have a couple of Pokemon to evolve, might want to evolve into the uh, Purloin there. Start getting some trades going. Evolution Incense is the first pick. Let's see if they grab a what tool they grab here. So a Muscle Band is a potential choice, though probably not what they want to grab. Oh, I guess I'm wrong. Do grab the Muscle Band early and plays the Evolution Incense and does find that Lipard. So Lipard's trade ability is in play. Can discard one card to draw two cards. Probably what our player wants to be able to do here to hopefully find some other cards that they can play this turn. Not seeing a ton of other options in their hand at the moment. I believe it was Colrus's Tenacity getting discarded with trade. Finding Professor's Letter, always good to find two energies. Probably will start powering up this. Uh... Actually, I'm not sure what they might power up here. The Yivatal is an interesting choice. It's got that derail ability, which allows you to loss zone and energy. Um, not a terrible option, does a little bit of damage. At the same time, they want, want to start powering up their Zerua. 
I had to guess, I think it's more likely they'll put the energy on the Yipital. At least get a little bit of damage down, start powering that up a little bit. It does have free retreat, so they don't need to worry about it from that perspective. So another reason they could just put it on the Zeru instead. Can't really play too much else from their hand. Looks like they've got a lot of supporters, unfortunately. That Dark Patch is not helping them. Energy does go down on the Yvital. He uses Derail. There might only be special energies that you can uh, put in the Lost Zone. Yeah, I think if I'm remembering right, it is just special energies. So unfortunately can't get rid of that water, that basic water energy that is on Lapras. Water player goes right into Frostmaw. So maybe they had that in their hand or maybe they just got a lucky top deck. I am not sure. Probably was already in the hand. That would explain why they went into the Snom. Out comes the Marnie. Actually very helpful for our dark player here. Obviously our water player doesn't necessarily know that. But we will get a hand refresh for our dark player. They are hoping for something a little bit better. Town map, a couple of energy. I think that's a Guzma and a Manaphy for our water player. Not a lot going on there. Town map getting played down. We'll get to see what those prizes are. Looks like their letter, Floatstone, the Rough Seas, Cynthia, Ball Guy. You know, a couple of things in there for sure that they would rather have in their deck. Floatstone is probably one of the primary cards along with the Professor's Letter. They probably would be wishing they had that Cynthia right at the moment so they could refresh their hand. But they will at least now be able to pick what they want once they do start taking some prizes. Manaphy goes down on the bench. I can't think of any dark type decks that really do bench damage, so not sure why our water player played that. Could just be forgetting something. See, not sure what just KO'd that Yvital. Should have only been doing another 40 damage with Hydro Pump, and I don't believe the first attack would take a KO, though I'll have to look that up because I don't actually remember what that does. But moving on here, our Dark Player's turn, they grab a Spirit Tomb that goes down on the bench. That will allow them to start Building Spite. Building Spite allows you to take one damage on that Spirit Tomb, then you do 10 damage plus 30 more with that Anguish Cry attack that it's got. Very good attack. Tate and Lisa going down to refresh the hand. Didn't really get much from that Marnie, it seems like. Let's see what our Dark player grabs. They still do have trade this turn, so they can get two more cards. Nest Ball, a good card to be able to grab here. They need more Pokemon down. Not sure exactly what type of dark deck our dark player is playing, so not sure what they might grab. Guzzlord, always a good option. That red banquet ability kind of cheats the point of this format in any way. It allows you to take two prizes if you are able to take a KO with it. It does only do 120, which is not the most amount of damage, but you do have ways to buff it with Muscle Band. Uh, and then some decks will play what's called Dark Amulet or something like that. It's another tool card that makes you do 20 more damage. Trade, getting rid of that. Frozen City, grabbing a Turbo Energize and one other card off of that. Looks like a Twin Energy. Not the best cards here. Not the worst. You can't attach that to Zerua. If they've got an Energy in hand, use the Turbo Energize, which technically they do, though it would make them use their Twin Energy, which they really want to go on that Guzzlord instead. It's almost kind of like, do you just equip the Twin Energy to the Guzzlord and you know, that's pretty much the same as the Turbo Energize or not. Looks like they just opt to pass. I guess they are worried about getting knocked out again here so they don't equip an energy. A little surprised by that choice, but we'll see how it works out for them. Here comes Irida from our Water Player. Let's them get a Water Pokemon as well as an Item Card. This is honestly one of my favorite supporters. When I first started playing Pokemon, I was playing a Palkia deck and I just love to play that Irida get one of the water Pokemon I needed, find an item I needed. GLC will allow him to find that Wailord. Talking about that before, very powerful card, 200 HP. I think probably one of the highest base HPs, if not the highest base HPs of any card that is played in GLC. Also takes 30 less damage from his attacks for that ability. So it's effectively a 230 HP Pokemon. 
Then it's got an extremely powerful attack. It does cost three water and a colorless. It does 120 damage plus 120 more if you have a special energy attached. Usually put something like splash energy or wash energy on that. So it's hitting for 240. That is obviously KOing basically everything in format, even lots of things with luxurious capes attached and being able to take one, two, or even three hits sometimes. Water also usually plays a lot of ways to be able to reduce the damage even further with Lake Acuity, as well as things like Pot Helmet, but we'll see if that happens later on. So it goes ahead and gets that Sobble with that Nest Ball that was played. Looks like our Dark player was just wondering if that is the hand that's sitting over there, which our Water player confirmed it was. Sobble we were talking about earlier as well. Very good Pokemon to get down as quickly as possible since Drizzile and Inteleon have that extremely powerful Shady Dealings ability. Allows you to find one with the Drizzile and two with the Inteleon. Another energy goes down on our Lapras here. So I guess there was two energies on that last turn. So, okay, I, now, now I'm seeing why that would have why that would have KO'd, because we, we did have another energy. I just missed that. So Zerua goes down. Our water player gets to take another prize. Up comes Spirit Tomb. Town map from our dark player, so now we'll get to see the prizes for them as well. Got Rainbow Energy, Sue and Heavy Ball. Floatstone also in the prizes. Teammates, oh, and their Zorark is there too. Twin Energy now goes down on the Guzzlord, so don't have a way to get an energy on this Spirit Tomb now. Guess they're just choosing to sacrifice it. Wonder if we'll see research. We do. A couple cards going away, including that Galarian Moltres. Our Dark player might grab that back from the discard at some point to be able to play it down and get a very good KO once they are low on prizes or their opponent's low on prizes. Hopefully found some good stuff from this Professor's Research Trading away that level ball, nothing left in the deck they want to grab with that. Rescue Stretcher might allow them to get this Spirit Tomb back once it likely goes down on this next turn. They are just building spite. Me feeling a little bit spiteful from that professor's research, not getting them too much of anything is what it seems like. Might be regretting that decision of putting down that twin energy now. Probably should have saved to see if uh, they would have gotten energy, but they really didn't want to lose it. I believe Dirk typically just plays the one double energy, which is usually there for the Guzzlord, because they want to get two Dark Energies with the Beast Ring and then put the twin energy down so they can start using Red Banquet right away. But it does put them in a situation now where they can't actually power up this Spirit Tomb this turn. So they probably will just have to pass. I don't see a way to retreat in their hand. Players are just really debating what else they might want to do before passing. It does put down Hoopa. Hoopa is a good way to be able to get a little bit more damage and finish something off that already has damage on it with that attack that does 90 damage for one energy. Oop, our player did try to attach a dark energy, had forgotten they had already put down the twin energy for turn. So that gets picked right back up. It's like our Dark player is really struggling a little bit trying to figure out what to do. They didn't get anything from the Marnie earlier, didn't find much from Professor's Research. They're trying to find some way that they can do anything, thinking about how the next couple of turns will play out, probably looking at, well, if I lose my Spirit Tomb this turn, you know, or how much damage this is last is doing if, if my Guzma, uh, Guzzlord gets bossed up. You know, what else do they have down on their bench? It's kind of looking a little tough already for our Dark player, who goes ahead and passes for turn. Wash energy going down on that Wailord, which now it's got that special energy requirement fulfilled. Professor's Letter also going down, so two more water energy likely going down on that Wailord due to that Frostmoth ability to put more energies in play. This is starting to look like a very scary bench for our water player. Our dark player is going to have to start going a lot faster, start getting some KOs if they want to catch back up in this game. They're almost certainly losing another Pokemon this turn. That Lapras is likely going to hail that Spear Tomb or something else, depending on if another supporter is played. At this point, the Wailord is only one energy away from being able to 
start attacking as well. So even if the Slapper goes down, our water player is basically ready to go with another attacker. Level wall coming out, probably going to see that Drizzile that will allow the Shady Dealings to go off to be able to find another trainer and also unlock that Shady Dealings and Teleon to potentially be played on the following turn, which allowed him to find two more trainers. Sobble is usually a Pokemon you want to target down if you are able to. That Shady Dealings can really just completely turn around a game. Sometimes you can Marnie down your water opponent into a couple of cards. They'll just happen to find something that will get them that Shady Dealings and Teleon or that Drizzile, which lets them find a trainer they need, which just gets them right back into the game. Unfortunately, our Dark player was not able to do that. Air Balloon is coming out from that Shady Dealings. Probably going to equip that to our, I guess the Frost Moth, usually a good place to put it. Uh, you know, it does have that two retreat cost, so kind of vulnerable to being able to be bossed up and just stuck in the active for a little while if it's not able to be KO'd that turn. So Air Balloon does go down there to give it free retreat, give our water player a nice pivot option. So anytime their Pokemon get KO'd, they'll just go right up in that Frost Moth and then retreat back down. They do have Guzma. So they can potentially get this Guzzlord down this turn, but they are getting the Life Hard. Actually, not sure that Lapras would be doing enough damage. I think it's only doing 100 right here. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't quite get that Guzzlord, but the Life Hard makes a lot of sense. Take out that ability to get extra cards. They did just retreat right back with the Air Balloon. Up comes Guzzlord. Very beefy Pokemon. So they do have Rhyon in hand. They've got the ability to start attacking. This is going to allow them to start swinging the game back in their favor because they're going to be able to attach an energy from the discard. If they don't already have an energy in hand, they'll find another energy. Otherwise, they will be able to find one of any card that they want from their deck. Debating, I think that was the Luxurious Cape. Maybe wants to make this Guzzlord really beefy, hopefully taking lots of KOs. It's one way for it to be able to survive this Wailord, I believe. I think Guzzlord is 150 HP. Yes, that sounds correct, because if with a uh, Fighting Fury Belt, it would survive against Snorlax's 180, so yes, it should be 150. Here comes Rescue Stretcher, getting that Purloin back. Maybe the Rue will be grabbed as well if they want to get that Foul Play later. Probably wanting to uh, use Foul Play to copy Wailord's attack. Likely the only way you can actually take down this Wailord in one shot with this deck. Another energy going down per turn on Guzzlord, as well as Luxurious Creep. That is what they grabbed off of Raihan. This is a big Guzzlord now that can start taking two prizes. Building more spite with that Spirit Tomb. Dark starting to look in a much better situation because of that Raihan. Not too many other good cards in hand. Evolution Incense doesn't help them just yet. Both of their basic Pokemon that can evolve went into play this turn, so those can't be evolved. Let's grab that Zorark. Probably going to see either Teammates or Floatstone. Teammates is the card that makes the most sense right here. Just in case another KO happens, we'll allow them to find two more cards from their deck after their opponent has taken a KO on them. Cynthia was grabbed from the prizes from our water player, so that gets played down. Going to shuffle the hand back in and draw six. Guessing they did not have much going on because they didn't play any cards before that. They're hoping to find at least one water energy. They do need that to be able to start attacking with this Wailord. They will likely find it. Water does play a lot of energies. They also play multiple ways to find energies. Professor Letter was already used, but Capacious Bucket is still in play. So if they can find that, they can use that. They do not need it. Pokemon Communication Center is going to put in the Archibax. It's the middle stage evolution of Frigibax. Allows them to search for one other Pokemon. Something that's kind of interesting about this card, you could actually, even in GLC, go back and get that Archibax if you wanted to. Our player is not going to want to do that, most likely. He probably wants that Shady Dealer's Inteleon, which seems to be what he's indicating. But it's just kind of a funny thing to be like, hey, didn't that we should just put it back in there? And it's like, well, technically, yes, but the game forgets. It does go back into the deck before you actually do your search. Here comes Shady Dealings and Teleon. Two trainers going to be able to come out of the deck. See what our player wants to grab. Already played. Actually, I don't believe they played the supporter for turn, so they could grab. Um, 
could grab their versus seeker. That could also help them set them up for later. Looks like they want the pot helmet and the lake acuity going for an extremely tanky play with this whale lord. This whale lord is going to be able to take minus 80 damage if they put that pot helmet on the whale lord and then put the lake acuity down. You take 20 less damage to all your Pokemon with water or fighting energy attached to it, 30 less damage from the pot helmet, 30 less damage from the whale lord's ability. So again, that is 80 less damage that this whale lord is taking per attack. Effective 280 HP on this uh, Pokemon, which still only gives up one prize. Our dark player is going to really struggle to take out this Pokemon. You know, they were really hoping for that foul play. Their best chance here is to potentially find a field blower, get rid of that Lake Acuity and the Pot Helmet. Thankfully for them, they don't lose another prize here from this Guzzlord. Though with that Luxurious Cape that may come back to bite them, our water player is already down to three prizes. You know, with that being able to grab that teammates, it honestly might have been better for them to just let the Guzzlord go down here. I, I definitely get why our dark player would not want it to go down. They want to be able to keep taking multiple prizes later on, you know, do the Red Banquet on the Manaphy or on that Frost Moth. Those are very good targets to be able to hit with that. But we'll, we'll see if that Luxurious Cape winds up hurting them. Here comes the Zorark that is down now. The question is, do they have a way to retreat their Guzzlord and a way to power up this Zorark to be able to do a foul play attack? At the same time, do they even want to do that? Since again, they're not, they wouldn't even take a KO on this um, Wailord. They would only be doing 240 damage if they did get another double energy card on there, which is not enough to KO it even uh, after you factor in that minus 80 damage that it's taking. It has to have a way to be able to bounce, get rid of both that pot helmet and that lake acuity. Again, they need to find that field blower. They can manage to do that as well as power up this Zorark. They could get back into this game. They've got a lot of things that they need to do this turn. Very rough turn. They've got escape rope, but that does not help them actually take down this Whale Lord, which is the big threat. If they can manage to do it, though, then they can potentially get back into this game. The problem, though, is if this Gud Lord goes down, that's two prizes being taken versus the four that our Dark player still needs to take. Um, so the Spear Tomb is kind of becoming a bit of a liability, something that's going to be very hard for them to actually be able to get any KOs with, because as soon as they go up with it, it will just immediately get KO'd again the next turn, and if this Guzzlord has gone down previously, that would be the last prize for the game. Our Dark player is kind of doing a little bit of calculating, trying to figure out what they can do here. I think teammates is the only supporter in hand, which they cannot play. One energy go down on Hoopa. Might be thinking about retreating with this Guzzlord. And then taking doing a little bit of damage, but it will only do 10 damage to that Waylord. So probably setting that up for later. Dark Patch going down. Probably going to see that go down on Spiritomb, I would guess. Oh, they actually didn't have any Dark Energy in the discard, so I realized they can't actually play that card. That goes back into the hand. Oh, it's seeming like our Dark player doesn't have a great play this turn. Here does come Escape Rope. So wanting to at least take a KO on something. You know, the only other option is to go up with that Inteleon from our water player, which is looking like what they're opting to do. 90 damage is not going to be enough to take out this Inteleon. You know, they did telegraph a little bit what they were planning on doing by attaching that energy for turn. If they had waited, then they could have gone up with the Spirit Tomb, taken a KO with this instead by attaching energy for turn. So a little bit of a mistake to prematurely attach that energy when they didn't need to from our Dark player here. See what they decide to do. Maybe they're just hoping that our water player doesn't have an energy and then they can buy a turn. Teammates will be unlocked next turn if um, if our water player does manage to find a way to take a prize. 
Dark has versus Seeker opts not to play that. I can't remember if they did a support of this turn. Go ahead and passes. So back to our water player. Looks like they've got just a few cards in hand. See that Bax Caliber, which is not helpful at the moment. Not that they really need it. I'm not seeing how this Whaler is likely going to go down unless our Dark player can really find everything they need. Might play that Sona. Find some more energies. We'll let them go ahead and treat if they want to. Instead, they are going to play the Peonia. They do have the ability to get that float raft or whatever that that's called. Allows you to basically just retreat a water Pokemon. So perfect for water decks. Might even be the only card that they decide to grab. So yeah, they're putting the Sona down into the prizes. Kind of another fun interaction that you get in GLC. When you use Town Map, your prizes get flipped up. Then if you use the Peonia, you get to flip one prize or multiple prizes back to face down. You do get to know where that is though, so they don't have to shuffle. Retreat with the Raft. Up comes Wailord. Gonna take another KO here. And then in comes the Zorark. Does that mean they, we know in their hand they don't have the cards that they need. At least I don't remember seeing it. Well, they do have teammates though. Teammates will allow them to find the two cards that they need from their deck. Again, this does come down to do they have a second double energy? I'm guessing they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone up with the Zorark most likely. Teammates will allow them to find, oh, actually both the Field Blower and the double energy. This could be the way to take the KO. There's the double colorless. Is the Field Blower, are they playing it? Almost certainly are. Every deck plays Field Blower. There's so many good stadiums, so many good, um, uh, what are those called? Tool cards on Pokemon. If you can get rid of both of those, you'll be hitting for 240. That will minus 30 from the Wailord's ability. So you're still hitting for 210. That's just enough to get the Wailord. Looks like our player is double checking, making sure they're doing their calculations. They don't want to mess this up. This is an extremely important play here. This could be the way that our Dark player ultimately comes back and wins the game. They grab the two cards. Are they the two cards that they needed? Did they get the, the right ones? We know they grabbed the double energy. Was the second one Field Blower? We will see after they finish shuffling. Real quick, our Dark player is just checking the discard, seeing what other options are gone from our Water player. This is an extremely tense moment for our Dark player. They know that if they can take this down here and our Water player can't follow up, then they are in an extremely strong spot. Definitely one problem that our Dark player has is that Shady Dealings and Teleon. If it can be powered up, which it can very easily with that Frost Moth, there is the Field Blower. KO is possible can use this attack, copy it with foul play. Again, you're gonna do 240 damage, minus 30 from that ability, we'll do 210, that is a KO. Cannot believe they managed to actually get the KO from this tanky Waylord. Again, players just double checking, looking at a couple of things before this is declared. God, that's an amazing play though from our Dark player. They have turned this game right around. Waylord goes down, all those energy going to the discard, grabs the float stone, so they got the ability to pivot next turn. Guzzlord is able to KO every Pokemon that is on the board right now. But what I was saying before is that Aqua Bullet, I believe is the attack from the Inteleon. It does, I think, 120 damage to the active and then 20 damage spread around somewhere else. That won't kill the Guzzlord, um, but it will kill the active Zorark, so that'll be one more prize taken for our uh, water player this turn. That would enable our dark player to come up and take two more prizes with the Guzzlord, assuming they don't buff the HP of this Inteleon somehow. But this could still be anybody's game. Water needs to find another attacker that they can put down and start setting up, because they're going to need to take a KO this turn and then be ready to take a KO right after. Just one water energy grabbed off the Sona. I guess it's the last one in the deck. All the rest of the energy is already in the discard. One of the downsides of that Wailord getting powered up, as well as that Lapras early on, I think we've seen seven energies that were attached total between those two different Pokemon. So it seems like our game did freeze here, but you no, know, it did come back. All right, so we're good. 
So we got the one water energy, a chorus, backs caliber and boss. If they can find one more energy, uh, but there's no way to be able to do that and then boss up that Guzzlord. But if, if they could, if they had one more energy to be able to power up their Inteleon, they could just boss that Guzzlord. And I believe that would be a knockout because that's, yeah, 240 already on that Guzzlord. It only has 10 HP left. I guess at the same time, actually, this is just, it was just game if they did uh, get that powered up because they could have actually killed the Guzzlord and that would have given them, you know, two prizes from taking out the K the active and the... Uh, and the bench guzzlord. But is our dark player's turn? Not sure what they drew there. They still need to take three prizes versus their opponent only needing to take two. Trainer's mail going out. I'm gonna look at the top four and grab a trainer card from there. Couple of good options. I see a Piers. I believe that was a Marnie. Gonna be a bad idea to play this Marnie here. I uh, don't know how many cards our water player has in hand. Oh, there's a Guzma. Gonna be able to grab that Shady Deals in Teleon. This is a great play from our uh, Dark player. This might seal the game for them. They'll be able to get that Shady Dealings in Teleon into the active, take two prizes off of it. Actually, does that thing have 100, 120 or is it 160? I may have been mistaken this whole time. It's hard to see, you know, from this distance exactly how much HP everything has, and I can't remember every single card off the top of my head. But down goes Floatstone on the Zork. Knew they got that from the prizes, so they'll be able to retreat this turn. Though if they're going to play the uh, Guzma, they don't need to actually retreat. Frostmoth is probably the better target. If it is 160 HP on that Inteleon and they can't KO it, then they're definitely going to want to just retreat and go up with this Guzzlord instead. Maybe they use a different supporter, so they opt not to. And so they just take two more prizes. Dark is looking in a very commanding position. Not sure how our water player is going to be able to get two more energies onto this Inteleon. One energy for turn going down on Manaphy. Water really struggling, thinking about what they're going to do. They're not sure how they're going to get out of this. I do see a boss in hand. They could boss up the Hoopa, hope that they can trap it in the active. Hoopa's not able to attack if it was bossed up on your opponent's turn. It does have to actively switch during your turn for it to be able to use its attack. It does have the luxurious cape. So our water player was like, why is that thing still alive again? Is what I'm guessing was being asked. And water ultimately scoops. So our dark player does get that win. Actually, to come back to this game real quick, um, this was not a win for our Dark player. I did miss what happened there. Uh, I'd forgotten that, uh, you know, Manaphy can actually attack. It's got an attack there, which does, I believe, 10 damage, that Wave Splash, which is just enough to kill that, Gale, that uh, Guzzlord, which allowed our Water player to take two prizes. So that's my mistake there, but ultimately does go to our Water player here. Very exciting game. Um, Crazy way for it to end. You don't really expect the Manaphy to attack. Didn't even see that play myself coming. Uh, Cause you know, Manaphy's not usually there for that. Ultimately, that Manaphy being down on the bench wound up being the way that the, our water player wins. Even though I questioned why they put it down earlier, clearly they are a much better player than I am. So again, great game for our players. Congratulations to water on that win. And that's our game. What a way to finish that one. Manaphy coming up doing 10 damage to take the K on that Guzzlord and take the last two prizes. Not something that you see very often, certainly not a play that I was expecting, but what a wonderful game to watch. Hope you all enjoyed that one. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like and subscribe, as well as leave a comment down below, uh, and I will bring you the last game in this tournament very soon so we can see the conclusion. With that said, I will see you in the next one.